All right, what we're doing today, we are painting some pieces that uh, uh, go on our 1966 vintage classic original restoration style truck. Let's go look at the truck so we know what we're talking about, and then we'll come back and uh, I'll explain to you what the fuck's going on here and what we're doing today. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Here's our 1966 Chevy truck that we've been restoring. Now this is a one owner truck. Uh, the owner owns the truck. The owner owns the truck. It was his grandpa's truck. And he's restoring this truck basically back to original. He's not doing a hardcore restoration on it, but he is restoring it back to originality. You can see all the interior has been painted. The outside has been painted. And the cab is basically back together just like it was from the factory original. So what we're doing is we are now actually working on all of the front end parts that go on the front end here, including the, the grill, the grill shell, the fenders, the inner fenders, the core support, and everything else uh, need be that needs to be done. So the next step that we took uh, in restoring our 1966 Chevy truck is we completely dismantled all of the front end parts. Now when I say front end parts, uh, we're talking about all the inner structure, the outer structure, the fenders, core supports, this, that, and the other. We went ahead and hauled those down to the sandblasters and that's basically what we got here. So as you can see, these are in bare metal uh, form. They're, they've been sandblasted inside and out. And I normally don't uh, suggest to get uh, the outer panel sandblasted, but since this is a 1966 Chevy truck, the metal is super heavy duty and there's no chances of warpage when this is done. Here's our grill right here and then here's our uh, grill shell right here. These are our uh, fender extensions that go up by the cab and you can see that these will probably not be used. This has some major rust in it and there's another spot right there. But uh, once again these have been sandblasted inside and out as well. And as we're making our DIY video, we got Weekly Loser over here acting like a dildo. Why did you just scratch your face with, face with sandpaper? Why'd you just do that? See how much grain's left on it? It's one of my secret sanding techniques. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to fucking do? And what we're looking at right here, now that it has been sandblasted and cleaned off, these are the inner fender wells, the core support, and of course the upper uh, tie panels you might call those. That ties the core support together with the header panel. And what we're going to do, we are going to paint these and we're going to paint them black. So what we're going to do today, we're going to show you how to paint your uh, panels that you had sandblasted uh, with a nice, nice, good uh, heavy duty industrial paint where you don't have to put primer on them first. Uh, originally from the factory these did not have any type of primer at all. All it was was a heavy duty industrial black paint and we're going to go back with that, uh, uh, that theory and do the same thing as they did in the factory. So if we look right here, you can see this is a heavy duty industrial paint. This is an industrial paint. This is a semi-gloss paint. This is, a, this is not a high gloss, it's a satin gloss. If you look at the can, you can see it doesn't have a shine to it. It's a semi-satin gloss finish. But this is not your everyday acrylic enamel. This is a very heavy duty industrial paint that is used for industrial parts. And it's basically designed to use for bare metal application where you don't need to apply any type of primer. And that's what we're going to use today. Uh, from the factory, I presume they used either lacquer paint or enamel paint on these pieces. Uh, preferably enamel paint because that was more durable and strong, uh, stronger than the lacquer paint itself. So we're going to go back with the enamel uh, theory 
and use our enamel paint to paint our pieces black without priming or sealing or anything else. And using this style of paint right here should uh, take these pieces and they should last many, many, many years down the line to further the restoration and uh, make it a brand new truck just like it was from the day it came from the factory. So the trick of using enamel paint is using the proper additives to make it last long. And when I say proper additives, I'm talking about hardeners and reducers. And if you look right there, this is the hardener that we will be using. It's called acrylic enamel hardener. All right, this is a cheap, inexpensive hardener. It's just as good as the very, very expensive stuff. That's the situation you have when you are painting and you're trying to save money and what should I buy and what shouldn't I buy. All right, there's a lot of products on the market that are cheap in price, but also cheap in material you might say uh, nine out of ten times you get what you pay for but when it comes to this situation here using enamel uh, one hardener is as good as the other so get the cheap hardener versus the expensive stuff this paint right here uh, this paint right here uh, being an industrial uh, acrylic enamel that it is cost I believe thirty six dollars for one gallon so that was a pretty good price and this stuff actually works very, very well. It's hard as a rock fucking finish, I can tell you that. When you open your paint up, you should always stir it up and make sure that all the solids are mixed, mixed with the liquids. And uh, we don't know how, what the shelf life of this is. We don't know how long it's been sitting. So it's always good to make sure that you stir your paint up thoroughly before mixing anything. And once you stick the stick into the gallon, once you put the stick in the gallon and start turning, you'll be able to feel if there's a lot of solids down on the bottom. So make sure that you mix your paint thoroughly before you mix it with anything else. The paint that I'm using here, I'm going to go ahead and read you what it says on the back here. It says, uh, Gillespie Industrial Coatings are tough, hard drying finishes made, use, made using special synthetic vehicles that provide rust inhibiting protection and beauty for general industrial and OEM applications. The surface should be free from grease, dirt, and rust for maximum protection. So this isn't really a paint that you would paint your car with. Uh, this is basically a paint that you would use for, let's say, uh, your frame, for instance, or for the pieces that we're painting right today. Uh, you could use this on the outside of your car, and it would look good for several years, but it will eventually deteriorate and tear down because it's not really an automotive paint that you use as a finish paint but more as an industrial paint on, uh, once again, your frame work, for instance, uh, subframes, uh, brake parts, uh, suspension parts. You get the picture. So we're going to go ahead and mix our paint up uh, to the manufacturer's specs. And you should always read your instructions when mixing paint. Uh, make sure that you mix it properly. I already know how much to mix. Uh, I'm actually got a half a gallon here, so I'm going to use a half a pint of hardener. And then we'll take our reducer and then add that to the manufacturer specs as well. And then once it's all mixed together, we're ready to start painting. And always remember for your gun safety to always use a strainer as you pour the paint into the cup. That's very important. And another thing I'd like to mention is once you add your hardener or mix the paint up, it's not reusable again. Any type of paint material that you have to have uh, an accelerator or a hardener to, once it's mixed and it's activated, it's a done deal. Okay, if you don't use it all, throw it in the trash. So let's go ahead and uh, apply two to three full wet coats on that for coverage, and then we'll see what it looks like.
And then once you add your last and final coat of paint, this is what you'll have. Brand new, restored, original, factory original, pieces, parts, miscellaneous for the restoration job that you're doing. So this is a situation where we did not use any sealer, we did not use primer, we did not use epoxy primer, we didn't use nothing. We did it just like the factory would have done it. And we painted right on to bare metal. But we also used the proper paint, okay, the proper paint to do that with. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, telling you and showing you how to do it, do it right, and do it the way it's supposed to be. You want to go ahead and use industrial paint for industrial uses only. This paint is designed for what we just did, direct metal paint. It's a semi-gloss black, you can see right there. It's a beautiful paint, it's a very strong lasting paint and will last forever. Always remember to use the additives that are required to use with the paint and always remember to read your directions properly. Take it easy and good luck on all your projects, even if it's your first one. Make sure that you follow DIY Auto School, that's YouTube channel DIY Auto School, and watch all of my how-to videos on restoring cars and all the tech tips that my friend Pete can give you to get her done and do it right. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.